Hi, my name is Graydon Blair from Utah Biodiesel Supply, and today we're going to talk about doing a water test. I have a tool called a Sandy Bray water tester, and I'm going to show it to you, and then we'll actually do the test. This kit comes directly from Sandy Bray Laboratories. It comes with the testing vessel. It's got a gauge on top, and then inside is where you'll actually do your sampling, right in here. Uh, it uses a chemical called calcium hydride to react with hydrogen in water, and which produces a gas, which produces pressure, which is how you take your reading. Um, it comes with 50 individual of these packets of the calcium hydride. It also comes with some solvent. This is basically it's equivalent to like paint thinner. It's a dried solvent, and it's what we mix the oil in with, uh, so that we can do the test with. It comes with a nice little clean-out bottle to clean the test out with. Also comes with uh, gloves. Comes with a full instruction kit, um, two syringes, one for your sample and one for um, the solvent. And it comes with, like I said, the calcium hydride, some scissors to cut that open, and then it also comes with a pair of uh, safety gla glasses. You can also purchase additionally uh, a handy carrying case, and it's just a poly case that you can put everything in and seal everything up with. So that's what we have here. To do the test, uh, you're going to take a packet of reagent A. We're going to put it inside this cup in here. We're going to draw 30 milliliters of our sample. I'm sampling some new oil. 10 milliliters of the reagent B, which is this solvent. Put it in there, screw it on, shake it a little bit, and let the reaction happen for about five minutes, and then we'll see what the gauge says. The kit does come with safety gear and it's important to wear it. I've got safety glasses on and I've got safety gloves on. Uh, we are creating a little bit of pressure here with some hydrogen, so it's important that you uh, be sure and be safe. First thing we're going to do is cut open our Reagent A packet and put it into the top portion of the kit, right in here. want to try as best as you can to keep it all in that little vessel there. Okay. The next step is we're going to put our 10 milliliters of a reagent B down in here. This is a dry solution. Of just a dried solvent. And then what we'll do is we'll put 30 milliliters of our oil right into the vessel. I'm going to screw the lid on. I'm going to pick it up a bit and I'm going to shake it and then I'm going to put it back down. We've let this run for a little bit and as you can see this has practically no water in it. Uh, this was brand new vegetable oil that I used, uh, so I'm not surprised. The needle is just barely coming up off of its uh, mark. So this is, a, this is a sample of new oil, no water. We're going to do a test with oil that I know that there's some water in. We're now going to show you how to empty the kit and how to clean it out. So you just use the pressure relief and then you open the kit up. Take the top off and pour the remnants out. As you can see within this kit, it's got lots of nasty stuff from the uh, reagent, so we're going to clean it out. And how you do that is with this cleaning bottle here. To do this, you take the squeeze bottle and just spray in here and clean it out over top of a container. I just have a cup here that I'm using to clean it with until you've got it cleaned out and then you can let it air dry. It's important not to wash this with water obviously because uh, we're testing for water and we don't want water in this kit. So we'll let that one dry out for a little bit and then the lid is the same way. You just use the squeeze bottle to clean that off and we're ready to go with our next sample. The next sample we're going to do is I took some new oil 
and I mixed in some water. I didn't really measure how much, so I don't know what kind of content, but you can see that this oil is cloudy. If you go to a restaurant and you pull some oil out of a bin and you bring it home, cloudiness in oil is one indication of water in your oil. It's not the only indicator that there's water in there, and it could be lard and other things, but this creaminess to the oil typically can indicate the presence of water. So this is the sample we'll be using for the second one. I'm using the lowest scale that comes with the kit. So we're going to put our lid on. And we're going to shake it a little bit. And as you can see, my meter is just climbing like crazy. They tell me if we go all the way to the top, like this is going, then we need to move to the next scale. Okay. <clears throat> the instructions say to screw the top on. Our test instructions tell us that if this exceeds 14 to stop and move to the next increment, it has, and so we're going to move out of the 1.5 range and now move into the 3% range. So it's obvious that this sample has an awful lot of water content in it. We've now moved to the next step up and it calls for 2 milliliters of our sample and 18 milliliters of the reagent B and then put um, our little catalyst in. So we will do that right now. And it says to go ahead and put the top on and take a new reading and see what you get and it's got a conversion chart for us. So we will do that. As you can see, this one is also going to pass 14. So that means we now need to move up to the next step, which is the 6% range. Okay, we've now moved up to the 6% scale. It is uh, set by adding one, one milliliter of sample, 19 milliliters of reagent B, and then uh, your packet of reagent uh, A. As you can see, we've just hit 14, so we now are moving into the 12% scale. So this oil has an awful lot of water content to it. We're now on the 12% scale. We're gonna, we've added a half a milliliter of sample and 19 and a half milliliters of reagent B and I'm uh, just about ready to put the reagent A in here. The scale on our water test kit came out to 10 PSI. So the way the equipment says to figure that out is you take 10 and you're going to times it by 0.8 times 0.8 8%. So our oil had 8% water content in it. Using this water test kit, you're able to test several samples of oil and find out what your water content is. Had we used this oil to make biodiesel with, we would have made an awful lot of soap. This test kit is available at Utah Biodiesel Supply, utahbio.com. Uh, you can go there and read more information about it. We've also got a link in the video as well as in the description.